All right, so today in class, I just want to go through a couple of density examples really quick. Uh, two of these questions are actually in your notes, so if you want to find those in your notes before we start with this, that'd be a good idea. So you can do these examples. But as far as calculating density is concerned, it's really simple, it's really easy. You guys know that density equals some mass divided by a volume, and my density units that I'm going to want to see are grams per milliliter. Right, so in all reality, I have some gram value divided by a milliliter that gives me my density. So I know that there's an equation for this, but the units themselves should tell you what to do. That's what that whole dimensional analysis part of this chapter was all about. You should be able to see with a gram and a milliliter, if I want this unit, what I should probably do with this value in this value here. All right, so this is just starting out pretty simple. It gets a little bit more complicated, but if you had a 10.4 milliliter sample of mercury and it has a mass of 141 grams, you should be able to tell me what the density of mercury is. So very simply, I take my 141 grams and I divide that by 10.4. Right, that should give me grams per milliliter as an answer. That's what I want from my density, so let me grab my calculator here real quick. 141 divided by 10.4. I get 13.5 five, eight, so on, so on, whatever. I, I do know that I only need three sig figs in my answer, so I'm gonna round that appropriately, and I'll get 13.6 grams per milliliter. So that's pretty easy, right? So then you get to this next question that I added in. This may or may not be in the notes, but it's something you can think about, right? I could then continue with this question and ask you what would be the volume of a one kilogram sample of mercury. So again, I don't actually want you to use an equation. I just want you to understand what you need to do. So I'm gonna need my answer, my density, 13.6 grams per milliliter, excuse me, grams per milliliter to solve this problem. But I'm gonna use what's given here and it gave me a kilogram. So I should know right away that that doesn't really match. Right? If my density is in grams per milliliter and I'm given a kilogram, I might need to change that into grams before I can do anything else. So I'm actually gonna make this a dimensional analysis problem. I'm gonna start out with one kilogram. And for the, our purposes in this problem, we're gonna assume that's exactly one kilogram, so we're not rounding to one sig fig, but I need that to be grams and not kilograms. So I know there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So now with a gram value and then also a density value of grams per milliliter, I should be able to get my answer. I should be able to figure out what my volume is. But what I would actually do with this is continue with my railroad tracks. Continue with my dimensional analysis. Because I can see that this unit up here is a fraction, grams over milliliters. So I should be able to use that as a conversion factor. For every one milliliter, there's 13.6 grams. So I can continue with this railroad track and just do what I was doing before and I can come up with an answer. My answer is gonna have the unit of milliliters, so it should give me a volume. So that's all I really need to do. So I'm gonna take one times 1,000 divided by 13.6, so basically just 1,000 divided by 13.6 on my calculator, and I'm gonna get an answer of 73. 5 to 9, All right, I only need 3 sig figs in my answer, so it's going to be 73.5 milliliters. 
So if I had 73.5 milliliters of mercury, it should weigh exactly a kilogram. All right, so that's what I want you guys to get to. I understand if that's not necessarily what you want to do right away. There's another way to solve that same problem. I could set up my density, excuse me, 13.6 grams per milliliter is equal to some mass, which is 1,000 grams for my kilogram, divided by a volume x. And I can solve for x. But if you can see units like grams per milliliter, that density unit as a fraction and understand that you can use that in dimensional analysis, that really would make your life easier in the long run. Because I can do the algebra over here, right, solve for x, and I'm going to get that exact same an answer, 73.5 milliliters, it's just a different way to do it. Right, so understanding your units, seeing that you could multiply or divide by that factor automatically, going to make your life easier in the future. Otherwise, the other kind of problem that I wanted to throw in here just had a weird unit to convert. So this time, the issue is really with this unit right here, cubic meters, because I want a density, and again, I want my density to be grams per milliliter because then I can compare it to that density of water in grams per milliliter and decide if this balsam wood's going to sink or blow. So, again, need my units to match. Neither unit technically matches right now, so I'm going to have to deal with both of those. Right? First off, I can change this one pretty easily, right? I just want that to be grams, so move the decimal three times, and I have 120,000 grams. Right? But then I also need a milliliter, and that's where the big issue comes into play here, because I can't go directly from cubic meters into milliliters, not without understanding a few things first. Now, I did tell you at one point that a milliliter was equal to a cubic centimeter, which could also be written like this. And a cubic centimeter actually is related to a cubic meter. So I can actually work off of that. The problem is, is that it's not a very simple conversion, right? Because I know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. If I want a conversion from cubic meters to cubic centimeters, what I end up having to do is cube both sides of this equation of that equality. Right? One cubed stays the same, so it's still one cubic meter on this side. The unit changed, but the value, the size of that didn't. One cubed, one times one times one is still one. But 100 cubed right, should have 100 times 100 times 100 it should have six zeros total. And that's how many cubic centimeters there are in a cubic meter. So now I can actually convert that into milliliters. Right, so I know that one cubic meter that I started out with anyway is equal to one million cubic centimeters. And I know that cubic centimeter is the exact same thing as a milliliter. So I know how many milliliters I have. I know how many grams I have. Now I can actually calculate and decide what the density is here. I just need to take my gram value, 120,000 grams, and divide it by my milliliters, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1 million milliliters. All right, so I don't need a calculator for this. I'll just start getting rid of zeros. All right, so it's 12 divided by 100. And when you do those last two zeros, you just move the decimal twice. My answer should just be 0 0.12 grams per milliliter. 
And again, I'm going to assume that was exactly a cubic meter, so I can have at least two sig figs in this answer. But 0.12 grams per milliliter, when I compare that, and I think about the density of water, one gram per milliliter, that's the whole point, the whole purpose of a specific gravity. It's just to think about my density in terms of is that bigger or smaller than the density of water. So since 0.12 is smaller than one, I know that this stuff is going to flow. Right? It's not very dense. It's less dense than water, so it's going to flow. So if a value for your density is less than one, it'll float. If it's more than one, it should sink. And then if they happen to equal one, it really doesn't float or sink. It's just going to hang out where it's at. So I know two things from this problem. I got an answer for my density. But I also know, and this is what I want on a test, when it asks for specific gravity, I don't need you to calculate anything. I just need you to write next to this that it would float in water, because that's what I'm referring to 99% of the time. It would also float in that mercury that we talked about a second ago. But mercury is much, much more dense than the water. Mercury with the 13.6 grams per milliliter would probably sink in the water. It's much, much more dense. It's greater than one. Okay, so that's all I, we really need to do. Just a couple problems there. Now you have a worksheet that you need to complete to go with this, and then some practice problems.